Yeah. yeah. So oh, cool. can you uh, talk more? Uh, tell us more about the Anunnaki. Anunnaki? Like, okay, so first of all, I'm very, like, super novice, but I've known about it for a long time. Like, it's something I, but, like, I still, like, I'm trying to wrap my head around kind of the idea. But the story goes, like, ancient Samaria, there's a lot of fucking shit they don't tell you, like, like water erosion on the pyramids, and they found Galepe Tepe, I think, was a place, and it was, uh, Basically, they had, like, cereals and grains, and they had all this, like, advanced art and all this stuff that years later was not around, right? So, like, the story of evolution is different, or the story of where we came from is a little different already, just based on the information we already have. And then... Thanks. So... But within, like, all, like, ancient Samaria and all these different places, and, like, there's been all these stories. Like, there's similarities in stories across all religions hmm. that, like, have, you know, deities or gods or whatever you want to call them, flying things, coming here, teaching us stuff, right? Yep. And I think modern religion, I think the problem, you know, first is, like, the winners always write history. And then yeah. two is, like... It's like the whisper game, right? And things just kind of get lost. And we don't look at it from the angle, I guess, from the right angle. Like, the, like I was raised um, Christian. Like, I was saved twice. Like, I, 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 I almost came from a place of being a Christian to, like, becoming an atheist. That's interesting. Right? Like, be, like almost so much of an atheist that I wanted to prove people wrong. Yeah. I wanted to prove your stupidity. <laughs> interesting. <hear> that. Right? <clears throat> Fast forward to now, I'm more spiritual than I was then. It's just Your changed, own version. It's changed perspective. Yeah. And, you know, I think... Let me let the dog... Yeah, man. I think that what I've come to believe now it's less on like the right or wrong of each religion. It's like what are the stories and the context it's trying to like guide me with, right? Mm -hmm. It's that idea of reading. I love that. Like, have you guys ever kind of revisited a book off after many many years? You know, and you're reading the book, and you read it before. Yep. You read these same words. Mm -hmm. Before, yep. But for some reason, they hit you yep. in a completely different way. Why is that? It's you're uh, different. Yeah, where you're at, right? It's meeting you where you're at, which I know Kurt and I talk about freaking all the time. But that's what it's all about. What's hitting me with what you're saying is, it's your filter that you take these stories in through. Yeah, crafts your reality. So that's how that hits you. I. No way, shape, or form anywhere near as you if you've been saved twice, but went to church, Roman Catholic, did the communion, did the... Let me tell you about the being saved, though. I was, also, yeah. I was also a little boy, like like maybe 12, and I was surrounded by older men telling me if I didn't, I was going to go to hell. And I was, it was basically one of the most uncomfortable experiences of my life. I can only you know, imagine. Like, it, it like forced me to say these things and do these things that did not feel authentic or right, but I was too young to understand, and I didn't know what that meant. And it was like at, at a, like a fucking like a camp event, you know? You know right. A tent, a tent event. Yeah. And like... This, I, you, you went to these with your family? My mom, yeah, for a mom. while. But at the same time, I had all this contradiction of shit in my life. There was this, because I grew up like a skater punk, too. So, like, I started, I remember listening to the Sex Pistols, like, and the line is, I'm an anarchist, I'm an antichrist. And I'm like, and then I remember going to a Bible study thing and talking about, like, propaganda and how, like, like you have to make sure everything. And now, I don't disagree with it now. Like, but back then, I was like, it's telling me not to listen to the music I want to listen to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, it's wild. I think the biggest thing I've learned is everything 
everything you've been told is pretty much a lie. And I say that with love. I say that with as much love as, as you can, can absorb because the lies aren't like what about it's not intentional, right? It's it's kind of the trend of the the times, right? And each era puts their spin on the lie, mm-hmm. passes it further down the line. But that even, that would be the story in my vocabulary. Yeah, yeah. That's the story you're supposed to follow. You're supposed to do that. Think about it though. You're born as a child, and then all of a sudden, like just it's Christmas time, right? You have this person that sees everything you do and everything like. You're, you're completely watched, and you're naughty or nice, and you get materialistic things yep. if you're good, right? And oh yeah, we talk about repetitions, and repetitions build who we are because we are the programmers of our computer, right? But at that young age, like it's our folks. Gift it's, culture it's, it's, is it's, ridiculous. It's, yeah, man, it's fucking insane. But you're so <laughs> yeah, right. That's just one aspect, right? Then they tell you you have to get married, and you have to go to school, and you have to do like there's all these things that require amongst this norm, right? And if you very slightly stray, like you feel the repercussions of like comfort, right? Because falling in line is comfortable. Your two weeks vacation, your you know your four hundred one k plans, like all these things, all these <coughs> like safety networks. Like, they're, they're, they're like fear things, right? Like, because people are so scared about the future. So, that like, a 401k, what is that? That's protecting me for the future. Yep. Health insurance is protecting me for the future. You know, like, <coughs> what are all these things? And it's like, but at the same time, your soul is getting sucked, helping, like, corporations achieve their goals. Tell me. That's where your attention actually is put, right? Regardless of who you voted for <coughs> on, in November... Where are you directed? Yeah, I don't even care about that, right? Like, like your day to day. What are you? Yeah, vote, yeah. What are you voting for for your day to day? Exactly, hundred percent. Yeah, dude. That's well what I'm said. Well and said. So that was the first time that you were <coughs> that, Excuse that you were uh, swayed from Bible camp. Yeah, the first time. So the second felt. time, you know. So it's also it's also understanding yourself. Like there's then there's humility in it, right? Like why do we? Why do we like? Why does one sought out God? It's never during fucking amazement times with gratitude. It's always with like time of need. <laughs> and it was when I was in basic training in yeah. the army, and I was just like, I, I was just like, you know, I was eighteen, and I was just out of high school, and I didn't chose not to go to college. I knew I'd fuck it up. You know, I just knew I'd fuck it up, so I went to the army, and you know, the recruiter, he was good. He he talked. I was a combat engineer, and like he 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 was really good. He's like, you're gonna blow shit up. And, like it just, I wanted to do fun shit. Yeah, yeah. And I've always, Who doesn't? I've right. always kind of based my decisions on the enjoyment of the time I will spend in the thing I'm doing, right? And sometimes that shifts and changes. And believe me, there's a lot in the army that was not enjoyable. But um, you know, in hindsight, god damn, man, it fucking molded me so strong. Like the army has a, a manual for everything. <laughs> right, Dude, they're prepared. Like, it's a dry ass read manual with no opinion, just as is fact. SOP. How to do task, <laughs> right? Like, and it's just it's just dummy proof, right? Yeah. Like, and then do you get life, way. you get married, you get kids. You you want to become an entrepreneur or not follow the common thread, and there's no manual. Mm. And then, then you have to create your own, I think. I think that's where, uh, when yeah. it comes to stuff like Ray Dalio and his, like, principle theory, right? Like, we need to, like, figure out, okay, that didn't work. Let's not do that again. You know? But most of the people you see struggle, I guarantee you see them hitting the same head against the same door over and fucking over. Right? It's, it's a nonstop. And, in, 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 like, with elderly, like, parents or something, like, it's, it sucks to watch. You know? It... And it's not my job to, I can't get someone to not hit their head against the door. I can try to show you some light, but like, that's a personal thing, I think. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, especially totally. with family, man. It's so fucking crazy. Oh, uh, yeah. Family, very hard. Yeah. You know why it is, though? I think it's because, like, family, like, the things that have, like, that you have the most power on you are the things you kind of hold the most dear. Right? Like... It's your wife. It's your friends. Like the douchebag down the road that talks shit to you when you're driving by. Like you're not gonna think about that in two minutes, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. 
yeah, but like when totally. your fucking dad scolds you about something you accidentally did stupid, it, like it, you take it home with you, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. and then you realize you grow up to realize that your dad's just human too. <laughs> They're just as fuck as I am. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's an interesting, uh, it's a very yeah, interesting perspective. I, I find mad gratitude in all like, like my my family structure's flaws kind of propelled me in the directions that I'm in today. It's weird. So they're they're kind of sacrifices subconsciously, like that they didn't even know they're doing, like that I saw that I saw was bad. I pretty much based my life against that. Mm. Right. Like, my yeah, mom's yeah. a diabetic, and my mom was like, you're going to get it. Your, your grandma has it. My grandma, like, it's this thing. Like, everybody gets it. And I was like, fuck no, I'm not getting it. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it's my choice. Yeah. It's not It's not the thing. Like, all of this stuff that you're telling me, like, and it's just, like, from a nutritional standpoint, my childhood, the four food groups and the food pyramid, and then my mom's on trim, or slim fast and trim spa and oh, every yeah. fucking diet Yo, product. we had slim fast it's, and I'm like, up. Just eat real food. Just eat real food. But they did too. Like there was a lot. My dad had a garden, so there was like you know, almost the real food was way better back then. Yeah. You know? yeah. What do of they say? Course. Like the nutritional content right now of a carrot is like ten years ago. It's ten times less than it was ten years ago. Oh my. Right. The actual like yeah. what you get out of the ground the because carrot. of all the yeah all the monocropping they're doing. Yeah. They're just growing carrots <sighs> in the same soil year after year. Yeah, after and just year. trying to replenish like the bare minimum of what the carrots need to keep them growing, you know, like That's so just keep, sad. keep the, keep the, like the mass of the carrot there, but it's like an empty thing. Yo, yeah. maintain a, the it's orange. It's just, yeah, it's orange. Well, that's about to die. <laughs> just like everything you've been told is a lie, right? It's, yeah. uh, and then, and then you consider you're, you're shipping the carrots in from out of state in a bunch of plastic, driving the trucks down the road, yeah. For nutrient depleted roughage, that and yeah, eating so meat, eating red meat or whatever, that's from local is bad, and yeah, there's a there's an odd. I don't we just eat, accept. But it's not bad, hey, we right? should eat like, more vegetables and less meat. But I, I, there's very little context surrounding that. Yeah. What are vegetables good for if they're nutrient? It, I mean, and, and you guys, you, you do baseball, and I assume this is similar how you coach baseball people and how you do your coaching, and probably how I, I attack my people, but like, all of it is so individually different, person to person. Like, if I really want to optimize someone, like, I need them one-on-one. Like, I can't put them in a group setting. It doesn't fucking work. Mm. And like, nutrition has to be almost one-on-one based on the body type, like, what they're achieving, like... I think I was we were working with you. We were reading blood type and nutrition thing, or maybe that was Morgan. We never went deep on it, but yeah, it was really interesting, right? Like it's basically like your blood type, and I read I'm O positive, right? And my blood type, it was like reading my horoscope to a degree. Like <laughs> it was like telling me like it's like you like like I have more acid. O positives have more acid. Um, so they more fat and more meat versus like A's and B's like are very mm. vegetable based. Like they crave vegetables more so. They need them really for their blood. Versus mm. like O oh, is like has like there's this acid thing that sure. happens. So like Damn. cheeses and stuff like that don't fuck with me like they can fuck with someone else. Hmm. Right. That's so. crazy. And yeah, I don't know how much. And maybe the be. nutrients that we're that we're measuring that we're depleting are less of the important thing than we thought or maybe it's more important than we thought like there's really no there's no fucking way to tell there's no way around it so I, how does this honestly how does this connect to the Anunnaki oh well I mean go back to that that when man started to evolve at massive rates was grains right cereals like how can we mass produce food yeah you know and supposedly the Anunnaki that's the tool they gave humanity before that, they were hunter-gatherers, nomads. They couldn't gather in too big of a group, right? Um, so that was part of it. And, and like, this is, like, I'm talking hypothetically because I don't know the exact story. But, like... We always are. Um, we don't know the fucking story. Did you know, like, <laughs> junk DNA 
in humans, like, there's a bunch of DNA that, like, it, this is supposedly, like, so we were, like, the hunter-gatherer, like, nomads, right? Like, and then the Anunnaki kind of just changed us, right? Mm. And kind of made us, and in, in, in the stories, they say that, like, their home planet's atmosphere was crashing and they needed gold here. So they created mining areas to get gold because there's plenty of gold here, but... Um, the people they brought, like, I guess they, like, they wouldn't, they quit. <laughs> they, like, they, fuck you, they, like yeah. they had no workers, and they used us, supposedly. So, really, we were just made as them, but, like, there's all kinds of stories, and there's, like, like the one you, I, I drew for you, that is Inky. So, Inky was, uh, he was the one that was in favor of humanity, he, it was him and this guy named Enyol, and Enyol was, it was more like, looked at humanity like ants. Like, if he walked on them, he didn't care. Like, they were just there to do something for him. You know, it wasn't that he hated them, but he just didn't. And Inky really, like, was the one that gave the grains and tried to, like, sneak stuff to humanity for humanity to, to kind of, you know, and they talk about the Great Flood actually happening, and there was, like, giants and all kinds of weird, crazy shit. Like, wow. I mean, you get on these ancient alien history fucking things and like lose, <laughs> lose it but like all i'm saying is that the story i've been told knowing that everything's been a lie and figuring out what i've figured out so far is like i'll believe something that kind of makes more sense before i want to just follow the trend of what people think it is right yes mm. totally you know i i i i'll rather believe have you guys ever like kind of had a hunch on something and then like later in life you're like it comes in like Rogan or something there's something there like and you're like I've believed that for like five years <laughs> yes you know yes. and it's like you get these constant I've been ahead like, of that. but you've been constantly reminded and these reaffirmations from wherever they're coming from that like you're doing it right Kurt right like you like your thoughts were on and you should trust yourself yep. yeah. right you know and it's but it's against what they're doing at the gym, you know. You know, it's against it's against how they're doing it. You know, totally. all the people doing keto. You know. Oh right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, like, just, it's understanding. There's five mind. million. It's like string theory. There's five million methods to do five million things, right? Like, and everybody can take a different path. Yeah. You know, in they can lead to the same, similar, or some like places, right? Where do, where would you say the average person is at with? With regard to even understanding their their right to choose a story for themselves versus believe the one that's, it's, it's that hard to say. I, I, yeah, I don't think you can put a number on it because I think that like everybody has potential and everybody has like and when you have you ever had someone in your life that like when you're one on one with them they're one way and they're really like you can get like real deep with them but as soon as a crowd comes around they become like this thing sure right you know and it's like it's like killing whatever that is you know mm. like I mean that's been my journey right like duality I, duality my brother right? <laughs> Jesus Christ like my biggest thing in my life was like this was one of the like fuck like Rodney you were you were following a character that you created a long time ago and you keep on doing these trends of what this character does and you've told yourself this character has to do like I'm fucking crazy Rodney at the party that breaks the bottle you know what I mean like I have yeah, to like right. entertain I have to be like the fucking wild one because people are bored what are they gonna do they need someone that's not, <laughs> you know and I have to be tough I'm a guy I'm supposed to man up bro like you know and at the end of the day I'm a fucking emotional emotional guy I'm very fucking sensitive and I don't want to fight. Yeah. And, and like, sure, I can dig into that part. Everybody can. And if I have to do it, I will. Totally. I know I can. But like, that's not where I want to play. Mm, right. You know, and like getting over that whole like men, manly bullshit that like, I'm less of a man because I cry because I watch Jimmy V's speech once a year and it fucking touches me. I know you love Right? I know you fucking, love Jimmy V. You gotta fucking... <laughs> if you, what? You gotta think? You gotta... Laugh? Laugh and you gotta cry. cry. And you've had a fucking good day. It is a good day. I mean... Who can, Jimmy who can v, argue right? against it? Yeah, that's a tough argument to, to beat. I love Were you... So you weren't... Uh, in your childhood or... Were you a crier? 
don't know. Not really. No, I. My child is weird because my parents are immigrants, and like, they're also like came over right after World War Two, right? Like as children to this country, and my dad came over at eighteen. So like, there was a lot of open space for me to have to learn how to decipher what is. Yeah, I had to start at a young age because they like the answers they gave me were lies, and I knew it quick. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, my mom is just like 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 I you like dude. You, she was in debt, hiding it from my dad. She asked me to take them out and hide it, you know, from my dad. So my whole entire life growing up, I had blackmail on my mom. I <laughs> held her hostage. If she right. told me no, mom, do you want dad to see the fucking credit cards? Right. You know, like I was extorting my fucking right, mother. Right, right. Right. I learned how to do that when I was like young. Yeah. Right? And how do you not? If and like, like, like growing up and like looking back and be like, God damn, Rodney. Like, who were you? you yeah. Know? I've gone to the dark, right? Like, I think like you have to go spend time in the mud. You have to to understand what soft and light and love is. You gotta spend time in that place. You're scared to go. The place you're holding on to, even when you do stuff that like meditation really deep or like going out by yourself in the woods, these things or taking a cold shower or doing stuff that's off the beaten path, like there's a, a, a nervousness and a vulnerability about doing it. Like it's, it's mm -hmm. like, like ever asked if so, one of the craziest things you could ask someone is if they will meditate with you. Right, like they, they, yeah. it's almost like you'll get an offensive look. They'll be like, "What the fuck did yeah. you say to me?" <laughs> like, <laughs> they want to do what? Like I'm like, "No, dude, let's just sit there and be quiet. Let's just be quiet together." Right. You know, like, oh, 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 but that's like, uncomfortable. Why would I want to do that? Right, like, <laughs> and it's like I don't know. Like, can't our just energies communicate without words? Hmm. I I find it interesting that there's even a resistance to meditate with somebody else who you know also has a meditative practice yeah. right so if you yeah, all the three of us were like hey let's meditate now we could we could do it and we would let's be out it'd be less comfortable than when we're alone yeah no there's and this... that's you know <laughs> part of the spectrum i suppose but i have this like sweet asking after... a random person yeah. you're fucking absolutely right dog that's it is. It's crazy. Because I had this, this, this girl. At, and meanwhile, do you want to go get a drink? <laughs> is more normal. We use the... We use oh. The, well, let's talk about man terms, right? Like, oh, dude, you, like, let, you, need, you want to sit down for a beer? Yeah. <laughs> you need to go have a beer with your buddy. Yeah. We start with the story no. rather than start from yeah. center. Right. Yeah. About if, Imagine if you just had to meditate with someone the first time you met them before you started talking. Or, Dude, I have. I went. To, who I, are you? Or I did a I did a thing at a yoga festival once where it's like you uh, you sit like Indian style amongst a stranger and you each put your hands around each other and you stare in each other's eyes five minutes. Damn. Talk and you don't say anything. You just That's meet them there. Right, yeah. Like I had a lady and like it, it's like you start to feel their souls. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, yoga taught me, like, going into yoga and doing the yoga festivals, and, like, that was a super, like, the thing to get me out of the manly thing. Because I came from, like, you know, like, let's fuck away. Let's run fast. Let's be aggressive and grunt. Yeah. You know, like. Even when we first met, yeah. we're now we're both way more, way more grunt than and that, we are today. But I, I think, I think it's a perfect example of what we were talking about earlier of the spaghetti of how, like, we can end up in the same place because we've done completely different things. You know, and we're both mm -hmm. still the spaghetti of all of it has led us here, just right? like all the because it's like all the religion books. It's about how <laughs> we approach things. It's about how we we feel about this experience, right? Like, it, I love the Gary Vee thing he always says: one in four hundred trillion, right? Like, are your chances to be a human, right? Like, live every day. Like, it's it's really it's mathematically impossible for us to predict that this was happening today. We right. should be grateful. All right? Yeah. We should be fucking grateful. Damn near well, all the time. <laughs> well, then that leads to just other things. Like, is this shit real? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? It's a, wonderful, it's a wonderful question. But yeah, the Anunnaki. Like, so back to them, right? Like, <laughs> you know, 
a lot of the like religions, there was the book of Enoch, which was taken out of the Bible. And Enoch, which Jesus supposedly used to teach his disciples, um, talks about Anunnaki. Hmm. You know, so. Interesting. Yeah, dude, the threads are all, they weave together. Just like, I, I love how you put that. Yeah. They start somewhere probably similar, way there upstream, and then they go wherever they go, and they, they connect along the way as you come to these realizations and you start to take back a little bit of choice. Yeah. And how it went. So, and how it went. Exactly. Yeah. And it is cool to even accept that really don't know shit everything yeah. and and, still don't know anything. and life and so <laughs> no. truthfully you know myself i'm hoping to nurture the belief that life happens at this moment at the intersection of here and now so the past was the future will right now i have a choice you're never in either yeah, the past or the future. Right? right, right now you have a choice. It's pretty wild. Yeah, you can <laughs> utilize both. I just think like but they're not there. Yeah, they don't. The past and the future, like it's it's weird, right? Like we're just like how much do you actually remember of your life when you look back at like everything? Like what are the like like we'll say we can kind of memory like. like you don't even how do you remember it? Yeah, and... like you like see a picture on Facebook that like I'm a memory or something, right? Or like one of those things that pop up, and you'll be like, "Oh fuck yeah!" And yeah, I'm cool. that kettlebell that one day. Yeah, 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 yeah like, dude. But like that was not there, right? Right. That was not um, even the premise of me thinking about. You know, it's interesting. And yeah. yeah, compared and to all media, the social media or and or just. The, so back to the even like, capture way more. Yeah, like, I think like back to the kind of what you said about how many people are kind of awake or sleeping, right? And yeah, then, I, I, I like, wasn't. I I just where would where's the average person at in your mind? To yeah, with regard to even to accepting yeah. that the path is from this moment on where you are you're choosing. You can I do think, whatever you want. I think a lot of people, and I think, I think, I think the <laughs> consciousness is changing, like, more so than ever. Oh, for sure. At this current time. For sure. Aided and I think own. kind of where I find a lot of people I see and deal with is that they don't necessarily not acknowledge the things in their lives. They acknowledge them in some kinds of ways. Sometimes mm -hmm. sarcasm, right? Like, I'm a fat ass. Let me get that fat <laughs> ass in beer. You know, yeah. they'll talk bad, negative self-talk. self, self -talk. Um, mm -hmm. That's like a way of acknowledging something, right? Like, sarcasm is a huge way of acknowledging something yeah. you don't want to just take on. Um, so I think, I think where, like, where the problem lies is the comfort and discomfort of the change, right? In the moment, every time, right? Like, mm -hmm. say... I'm a reactive person and I just get angry about certain things and like it's great to acknowledge that like okay I know that I do this and that's like the first step but you're not even close to being fucking clear right now you start working on it <laughs> yeah, right right <laughs> now you start to like every time that opportunity this is just how I am and you I'm can't like say I'm a reactive make, person yeah. oh, arguably man. clear may not exist on some items say that being clear of an issue or a worry or something yeah. may not exist. It may pop up always. It may be how quickly can you notice it and and basically make yeah. your choice to respond to it or let it cause a reaction. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you, baseball guys, right? It's a lot of like like just repetitions, right? Yeah. Like you're just practicing the same way. Now, what happens if you have that little fuck up? That little thing when you toss it to the shortstop, right? Like, and you just did the one thing and you did that bad repetition so much, right? <laughs> Does it, like, you have to recognize it, unwind it, and then probably, like, do you have to get back to zero first before you can start building it? Like, it's yeah, like, I, I almost believe. look at it like it's like a line, right? And there's a zero, and like, to, in order to stop walking with a certain bow leg that I constantly grow, or you know, like women, those kind of like, this? Yeah. 
one of them gets they get longer legs. Yeah. The adaptation happens. The body adapts to everything. Yeah, like that. So this is leading to like the shit. Like like everything leads together, right? Like like so we talk about whether it's adaptation or like personal development and the way we interact with the world or the way we interact with ourselves or the way we interact with our fitness and how we just move all the time. Like Kurt said once to me, and I'll ne I always use this, is like, if you just put your socks on standing up, you're fucking winning. Yeah. You yeah. Know I, mean? I don't ever, I fucking broke my toe over quarantine and I had to sit down and put my socks on. Oh, and man. I was pissed, <laughs> just with one side. <laughs> yeah, such a simple Those mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but it's it's always such a like a, like fitness in general, right? Like it's been this like chore. It's like a punishment, and it's like God damn, man, have fun playing in your body. It's an opportunity. Right? Have a no challenge, doubt. you know. Like, and it's a fine line versus like you know you're training kids because I train a lot of fighters, right? Like, yeah. so you're training people for sport and activities, which is a whole another kind of thing. Versus, like, now I just got, like, a 45-year-old dude that just wants to move well, mm, right? Like, totally. And, I mean, just push-ups and, like, 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 basic stuff are just, it's so important. Like, Hell yeah. like over quarantine, I had no gear, right? Like, I just had people in football fields and like, kettlebells. And yeah. it was just, like, it was, like, this amazing thing. Of just Hell like, yeah. like almost reinvigorate me to like learn more, go search, figure it out, know what you're gonna do. As I'm getting more clients because it's quarantine, all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I gotta get my shit together. Yeah, yeah. deprivation, yeah. Uh, breeding creativity. Yeah, like you're almost spoiled. Rather than play the victim, the rather yeah. than play the victim, you're someone who, hey, this is an opportunity to do something cool. And that was cool too. I mean, and the like kind of the, the acknowledgement of being out, outside every single day, rain mm -hmm. shine outside every day. Yeah, tell us. If you don't mind, tell us more about that that shift where you were coaching before and then quarantine and yeah, and just kind of went with that. Well, I think to where we're now. Yeah. I mean, jeez, oh, like, I think, <laughs> like so kind of the rewind totally because like I kind of came from meeting Kurt and we were like heavy lifter crossfitter type people, right? To all of a sudden getting a coach, opening a gym, and then getting a job at Empire, which is a mixed martial arts gym, and all of a sudden. I have first week kids that are fighting in six weeks that have to lose weight but get stronger. Mm. And I'm a brand new trainer and it's just like, I'm Mark Ripito, drink a gallon of milk, just pick up weight. Yeah. You know? Right, yeah. <laughs> you just hinge right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Moment arms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, and I still believe all that. I think all that anatomy stuff is huge. Like how you want to move mass, what's the optimal way? Right? Sure, yeah, like, yeah. You know, and I think that's just as important as being able to, like, touch your toes, you yeah, know. Function. Um, For sure. Safe to say but we're, so that, safe to say we're missing many things. That threw me down a fucking path of way different fitness and, like, kind of, you know, Edo Bortel and all these other type of people that are kind of off the cuff. And, you know, training with Greg at Wolf Brigade, too, he's not necessarily a conventional kind of guy anyways. So I kind of, you know, shadowing him for years, like... I learned all his tricks and then ended up in the situation empire and you know I look at it how naive I was because I would just go in and when I was a new trainer I would fucking just destroy people with the most asinine stupid shit ever oh yeah right it's just like like how much can I give them mm. how crazy and they loved it they ate it up right they soak it up and then you start to run to like you start to understand your responsibility and all this shit you know, when I started to understand that, oh, wait, after they're done with my class, they got to go spar. And now their arms are tired and they're getting hit in the head more. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, like, how does brain damage work? And if they're getting hit every Thursday more because I smoked the shit out of them and I could have strategically planned to kind of have them more fresh before sparring. Yeah. You know, like... That's you know, your ability to respond. But I had to see that and I had to hear it. I had to understand that to get there, you know. And, you know, so, you know... I kind of was always off the unconventional path. Like one of the things I always say to my new students is like, if you're here to get abs or care about what you look like in the mirror, you're in the wrong place. Mm. Like I want you to function and be able to do whatever it is we need to do. And fitness is not your craft. Fitness supports your craft. Fitness is there to support the thing you spend your life doing. Mm. Your jujitsu, your Muay Thai, whatever it is, whatever it is. You're, like, you know, you're fucking crocheting. You know what I mean? It, it shouldn't yeah. take away from it. Walk for in sure, the mailbox. Right? right. And, like, 
and sometimes like when I see people so engulfed in like in their fitness is their ultimate craft, like it's like, well, what else? You right. Know, what else? So I kind of understand that, but at the same time, now I got to train fighters to fight. So I'm like understanding that fitness is about supporting your life and it really is like, it's really dependent on what you do mm-hmm. and what your goals are individually. And now I have a group of people and this guy's going to get killed and now I have someone that like, and I have to manage this, right? And it, it's yeah. crazy. And then coming to the conclusions of like, oh, if I start to get one-on-one people, I can really get specific. I can really yeah. do so much more, right? So yeah. I started coming to that up to like when quarantine hit and... You know, then we got locked down, and I, I stopped teaching yoga immediately. Um, I mean, I assume cl- yoga for me is more of a feel thing, and I can't, I can't feel it well via Zoom, right? Like, sure. It's just like, and this is like another thing. I'm just going on tangents about like you know pre programmed <laughs> like fitness, right? Like it's like I found this in yoga too. It's like similar. Like everybody has these like templates which they follow mm. right like as if this template's gonna fix you right. right and like i have to follow this programming or this template and like i used to always do these months of programming for all my classes and it's like wait jane only showed up two days mike showed up one victor was there all of them like how some of them are eating healthy some of them are sleeping yeah. in yeah. some of them are <laughs> I think we were talking about it, and it's like, how, how can you predict and pre-program someone that comes in and they're maybe, like, hungover? Or they're just feeling sad, right? Like, yeah, yeah, it's right Sorry. there. Thank you. Keep going. I don't, I don't, sure. I don't think you can um, appropriately, like, think your program is going to be able to handle all circumstances for any group setting. No like, way. It doesn't There's work. no way. And... It doesn't even account for like the immediate. So a lot of the way I started to coach was more on like a, I broke up my classes differently. That was the first thing I started to do is I started to, dudes don't, the people don't stretch properly on their own. It just no. doesn't happen. They, they like moving in good joint mobility and that work does not happen in, in an efficient standard when they're left to their own devices. So I created a, you know, different ways to kind of loosen up the body kind of in a way that we're going to kind of approach whatever we were approaching that specific day. Sure. And then it was just like, okay, what, what is the general theme of the people in front of me need, you know? Yeah. And how do I, and then like being able to scale, like, like, like RX, right? Like that's the stupidest thing ever, right? Like I think like people chase these numbers to, to, I'm going to RX this thing and they'll like hurt themselves for what? Like, and it's like, I want to challenge people to want to kind of know where their line is, but no, they don't have to go over it. Yeah. Yeah. Be your own coach. You got to have your own limits. It's interesting because... It's like sprinting a baseline, right? Do you sprint the whole time or you want to make sure the ball drops, <laughs> you know, before you actually start sprinting? So you have to be efficient with the actual mechanics of what we're doing while we're doing it. We're okay. We're watching. We're observing. We're seeing. We're still kind of going, but we can make sure we can go back if we need to, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You know, we're totally. being efficient in that kind of aspect. And like, I think all of fitness should be approached in that kind of manner. Like what is my level of like, how do I output my battery in the correct way? Right. Because I get a lot of guys that like they're fighters. Like they want to, everybody comes in they want to be world champions. Like I hear it all the time. Right. And I can, I can get down with that, but you have to announce it to the universe if that's what you want. But like you haven't fought once and you haven't even been in a, in a group environment. And then like, they just go so hard. Right. That and their body's not used to it. And then they just like, and it's like, I'm sitting yeah. there, I'm like, I've watched this for 10 years. Like, dude, you need to chill. Mm-hmm. Just chill. Just do it calm. Right. Do the squats as calm as you can. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you have a lot you know, to do. We, we just did death by squats. And it's like, it's, it's, it's horror. It's horror. I, I kind of just, I had four new dudes and I was like, this will be fun for them. And it's just like, I'm, you know it, right? Nothing. It's, unsc- <laughs> it's, it's. So it's fun for a lot of multiple reasons. So a, a minute one, you do one air squat. A minute two, you do two. A minute three, you do three. 
the way you stop, you either quit or you can't finish the squats in the consecutive minute. Right. right? Okay. So it's, I leave it up to them, man. You quit whenever you want. And you start to see the wildest of things. Oh, like, sure. You know, like, but like, you know, I had a guy get up to like 50 something. He did over 1,300 squats or some shit. You know, Jesus. like, but like they were, they were starting at garbage and like his back was hurting. And I was like, you know, when you try to approach these things, like you can't really predict what they're going to do in, within your body. So I guess it's good to kind of go there. But like, how do we handle that stimulus approaching it and kind of walking away? I think, I think cooling down too, right? Like mm -hmm. cooling down from shit that's crazy, like is never looked upon as mm -hmm. like, like focused upon. Like, and I think it might be the most important part of all of it because we're fucking destroying the tissue and now like, the recovery is the, the utmost importance after totally. that kind of, you know, and it's like people just go sit in their car. <laughs> you know? I've shifted yeah, almost. And then sit on the couch. I've yeah, shifted almost, almost entirely like, over to uh, the, the recovery being the training now. <laughs> For real. I mean, we were just yeah, in the it. sauna. That's all I basically do too. We just were in the sauna at my house and fuck stretching. Well, well, you guys aren't chasing artificial goals, right? You're not chasing like just doing you know, what feels good. You're you're you're, and when it feels good, you guys interact with the world better. And when you interact with the world better, people benefit. Yeah, that's it. it. I'm hoping that's a transferable skill, honestly. Like figuring out what feels good to me, yep. so that I'm better prepared to engage with the world. Uh, how do you do that? Centering. Center and <laughs> pay attention. Sensitivity, man. Yeah, like yeah, I, I wanted to ask you. Or maybe it's chaos. Oh, for sure. It's amidst the chaos. Dude. The duality. Dude. You can't have one without the other. That's you true. You cannot. You cannot. Uh, there is no question. Like but you I'm, can I've step working, into the quiet. I've been working with... You can step into center. Out of the chaos. Yeah. Well, I think it's important to know that practice. light will always win. Like yeah. if, in every situation you look at light, like, I mean, the shadows aren't going to ever go away, right? right. Like they're here, we see them, right? There's light coming down, right? Mm -hmm. right. But the light will always overpower. Yeah, in the dark. Always. Yeah. That's cool. I, I dig that idea. Go ahead, though, Kurt. I didn't mean to cut you off there. Sensitivity. No, it's, yeah, it was working with the framework of uh, sensitivity being uh, our physical senses. See, hear, touch, touch, feel, like vibration, smell. Well, yes, because they all are on this on a frequency spectrum, right? I think, yeah. but, and then also <coughs> cultivating brain, heart, and gut. <coughs> COVID. <laughs> Those sensitivities uh, are superpowers that humans have, and. Uh, can practice tapping into and being able to use those senses to a greater degree. Fuck yeah. And um, I want to celebrate those things way more. Have a, a develop a collective understanding like, hey, it's fucking cool to develop my heart resource center. Yeah. For the because it's the same thing as developing my lifting, my sense of feel, my sense of tension. Yeah. And recognizing all of those things as superpowers that we can build independently and also get transferable reps. I wanted to I wanted to ask you officially if you'd be willing to draw your interpretation of sensitivity man, the superhero that develops these <laughs> that Jeez. develops these things. It's interesting. I could try. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I can do my interpretation of anything. Yes. Uh, that's that's what, all we want. <laughs> I, I can't do that's it right exactly now. what we want. No, no, no. no. Um, Take your time. Oh, no. I got a cocktail napkin right on me. If, you, if you're willing <laughs> Wait, to sketch it five out. Five minutes from us. No, man. On your that was the thing, though. So, like, with drawing, right? And art. And, like, it's just like, I think. Isn't this a relatively new thing for you? That two years? Yeah, I mean, it's fucking but, but you don't know the other stuff you do that relates to the other stuff you do, right? Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. know how you're cross-training yourself for something else later, right? Agreed. Now, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think if you're always kind of, I've been in this, my lady, right, she's done the same thing her whole life almost, right? 
she owns a salon, esthetician, kind of like just in that field doing the same thing. And she kind of looks at what I do. Yeah, she looks at what I do as like exciting because I've been in already in the five years we're together. I've had so many different things. Like I've just going to nutrition aquariums or like I used to grow weed. Like like or like I I've learned how to do art and then fitness and then yoga and kind of I just can flow yeah it's cool. and, I, and I think personally so it's this idea right like I look at her like man sometimes I wish I had that craft right that, that I really for sure with. and I've been one to flow you know not I realizing I also mean to belittle society's craft and my comment sort of insinuated that I want to make sure she were listening I appreciate the skill. I didn't mean to just say trim in the hair, but <laughs> oh, she just strips that shit right off. Oh, the show, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's Climb wild. It the whole, the whole. I mean, yeah. but like, okay, let's like we can talk about this, right? Like, society also goes. She waxes private parts, and sometimes she has guys, mm-hmm. right? And she's like, ask me, like, if it makes you feel uncomfortable, you know, um, you know, I won't do it. And I was like, no, nah, just do it. It's a lot of money. It's way more. I would imagine, yeah. <laughs> but like, there's certain situations where, like, all of a sudden, like in the moment, right? Like, I catch myself getting jealous or angry, like when I found out, like, this dude was in there and she had his cock in her hand waxing. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and I go to like it, it makes me go to a place, but I have to like almost walk myself off the cliff, like say, Rodney, like, like you have a trusting relationship, like you agree to it, and she's a professional and who at that. Cares? Like, it's like. Right. Yeah, which is a professional at that. But life's that's can, what she does. But life's gonna happen, right? Like, Fuck yeah. like I think sometimes we live in, in ways of trying to prevent the inevitable, right? Like we'll try to like instead of just axing the fucking head off when it needs to, like we'll we'll spend so much time trying like like I, I mean maybe I'm talking about myself. In my like I was married for 16 years and it was like it was great. We had a great professional relationship, but the intimacy wasn't really great. And like you know. It, I spent years just trying to fix this thing and like I love who I am right now at this moment so I don't regret anything Mm. but I do understand like how time in a linear thinking perspective looks of spending 16 years in a situation you probably should get out of quicker you know know, it's like not quitting the job when you should have or like being in that like that thing it's hard as fuck it's also way easier for those outsiders to assume that I'm so grateful she been... fucking did like she did it right she she ended the shit so it was like and it, it was devastating but at the same time like it freed me yeah in a way that I would... you got to unsubscribe from a bunch of story and it's crazy when you spend years just thinking what your end's gonna be and all of a sudden all kinds of space opens up and then like I say without space there's no possibility Right? When we're piling shit and shit, like all these people with to do's and to do's and to do's and this task, let's get tasks with bigger and more work, more work, more work. Like, you're not leaving room for growth in anywhere because all you're looking at is productivity. Yeah. Right? Like, and productivity isn't like, you know, if your team isn't growing, then at the end of the year, what do you do when the productivity is gone? Right? And you have another team come in. Mm-hmm. You know, but if you're growing a team, yeah. right? you're, you're developing. It's so much different. I just, I think, I've told Curtis before. At the end of the day, like this is my shit, and this is why I'm here, and this is what I continue to do. Is like, you I switched trust... over to creator. You switched over to you're creating, the, you're creating the future. Versus any. I just feel that like. Where you doing in your life? As long as everything I'm doing. Is as authentic I can, as it can be, and I'm trying to do it to benefit things. Like it's not I'm not taking from anything. I'm giving the universe, I'm serving the universe by yeah. helping people like understand how to move better or how to just like. Because what happens when you get someone to move better? They get self confidence, and they start to get self confidence, and they're like, "Hey, I'm kind of where I can go to learn about more diet and stuff," you know. And yeah. then then all of a sudden that person is vibrating with someone else, and if I can be a catalyst. To, to just continue that, right? I believe that the universe will give me everything I need. I don't have to like have these grandish desires of like big companies or lots of money or anything. Like, yeah. It, it and so far it has. It's fucking scary though. <laughs> you know. 
Yeah. That's awesome. The, it's the uh, the uh, grander calling to. Um, so, we have to so, be the fucking examples. Yes. Yeah. Personal you accountability. To, up to, yes. to just be about. Stop it. being quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Like stand up and count, call people out when they're just in their stories. You know, like you said that. You said that. I'd love. Dad, you, Dad, you said that. Dad, you said that before. Like, yeah. or like, like you know, listen, just listen. Maybe just observe, right? We observe, right? Like, and it's like, I is the content or thing coming out of whoever's mouth benefit or not benefit? You know, does it take or does it give? Right? Is it condescending? Does it have a bad context or is it good? And like, you then then kind of start to relate that with how that person feels about themselves. Right? True. You know what I mean? And tends to be people that don't love themselves are also throwing out things of unlove. And that people mm-hmm. that love themselves Blaming, are always gossip. kind of like, Kurt and I hadn't seen each other in forever and we didn't even talk about the pandemic for, or the virus or anything. Like, we, were like, <laughs> we just were like talking about like repetitions and in infinity. Yeah. Like, so you know, it, it's like, that's what it's fucking about. Yep. Like we, we, yeah, we do a lot of backtracking and oh, check. Oh yeah. How, how, you, been? how, how you, you been since the pandemic versus like, like as we're leaving, right. there was a, <laughs> right. there was a like, my, I broke my band this morning, but I have been doing pretty oh. well on catching it. That's last awesome. week. Anyway, dude, I feel that it's, uh, when you made this shift then to one-on-one class. Oh yeah. Jesus. Dude, it's No, cool. no, yeah. So like, you know, COVID came and then like, I kind of took it seriously at first, for sure. I was definitely like, you know, in the army we have to do CS gas, like, you know, like stuff you can't see. I, I acknowledge that I can't see everything and there's shit there that I can't see that could kill me. Right? And I don't know everything. Oh, so yeah. I should probably listen to people that are smart. Oh yeah. You know, without being paranoid and scared. Right? Just being smart. Mm-hmm. You know? Sure. But it's time that I started to realize, oh, wait, I could just, I could, first I thought, like, in the army, we trained out every fucking day. We worked out outside. We had gear. Right. In whatever formation, like, if it was raining out, we had our rain gear. If it was snowing out, we had our snow gear. If we, mm-hmm. it was summertime, we had our summer gear. Right? Like, and, and you just had the proper gear for the, the environment you were out. And, and I was like, people were texting me, and I had a few clients. I had, like, maybe three. Before that's it, like, mm-hmm. and, and like by the time I was done, I had a full schedule. Yeah, like, awesome. it, I quit the yoga studio just because it was like, I didn't see like a group yoga class ever coming to be. I really love teaching group yoga classes, and I'll definitely teach one again. But at the same time, like, being able to make money training people one on one, which I've also learned through my experience, seems to be the most productive way to get people like to get people like progress and like get people like when I can have that totally. yeah, way more, prescription way more impact. for yeah. them right so like versus coming to the group yoga class and then it's like duh and then like rubber band <laughs> it um fast forward and out like so yeah so as far as the content and stuff that I did it was mainly in parks, and then I trained at the football field, which there's something special about going on a turf field. It still it feels just fucking feels cool. Good. Yeah. Like, yeah. You feel like an athlete. You feel fast. And people feel good. Like, And I think you know, <laughs> approaching training and getting people to the right states to feel good is also another important factor. Yeah, you know? of course. You know, So within the time I picked up a fighter, he's a pro fighter, and I started training him every morning at 6.30 a.m. Nice. Right? So also, like... That now this is a commitment to my like oh fuck Rodney you gotta get up every day six thirty yeah, yeah like like you're Built not in account symbiosis that's what yeah. we're doing right if, and this is cool you know and it was it was now we're talking about working with one person every single day one on one and now what some can impact happen, can be made right yeah. like and that was more awakening in it. But it was also like, holy shit! I gotta find more content. Like, well, I gotta, like you, 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 you ring the well pretty deep. Like, take a like, jump, take a jump, and, and uh, build the parachute. But, but at up. the same time, what does that make me do? It makes me go look for it. It yeah. makes me go see what other people are doing, which I should be doing anyways, right? I should be always trying to fulfill the, the hopper of like kind of new, interesting ways to move, and and there should never be one kind of focus ever, right? It should be always 
because I really truly believe in the moment where that person tells you to do something, you fucking have no idea how to do it. That's what it's all about. That moment when your brain's like, wait, what did they say? Uh huh. You know, when you like, when you do like, you know, like jujitsu, right? Like, <laughs> I went and did it, and, and we get comfortable and confident in the ways we move, and like we like to play within those because we're good at them, and then when we forget to throw ourselves into the fire of something we're horrible at that we don't even know is, because in that moment, your brain is like, it's like a Google search that can never be. Your brain's gonna try to figure it out. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Dude. How do I move those shoulders? How do I yeah. like? And like, it it doesn't. At least to me, like when I can't do something and someone tries to get me to do it, like and it's like a, and I really want to do it. Like, it's pretty obsessive, you know. <laughs> oh, for sure. You know, and I, I don't know if everybody's like that. I think maybe some people are just like, oh, it's not for me, and they run away. But I kind of look at that as like opportunity to fill a hole. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know. It's, it's any negative feedback. Yeah. What you know, it's important. It's important. Growth. It's important to to do stuff that is challenging in any in any way. I think right. you bring up a good thing. Like we need to have this this thing in life where we have this ability to acknowledge success in not an egotistical way, but more of a way of acknowledgement, right? A way of like like you did something good, and I'm proud of you. Mm-hmm. And then Celebrate also it. say like, hey, this hurt me. You know, yeah. and I love you still, but yeah. this fucking hurt me, right? And like, we need yeah. to figure out, a, and it's just doesn't end by me telling you it hurts me. Like, how are we gonna fix it? What is our solution? Right. Yeah, right. It's it's it, and even asking from a place, of how can I? I mean, what's what, my ability to respond? How can I help the situation at the very least? And and if a relationship's gonna gonna work. Both are going to respect both boundaries. You're going to seek a symbiotic. The only thing you have way. control of in a relationship is you, right? Like, so if you want a relationship better, you have to be better. Yep. You know what I mean? Right, and you know the frequencies maintain alignment and long enough to maintain those relationships. And good. I mean, all well and good. And if they don't, that's all well and good too. Fuck yeah! All right, before time runs out, we have to go here. I just What's up? Really switch. Switch gears. Bro, let's and go. go. All right, favorite baseball team growing up? Oh, I love that was the Braves. Braves? Yeah. Cubbies. Cubs? Been a Cubs fan since seven or eight years old. My dad moved to Chicago, took me a bunch of times to Wrigley. It's great. Nice. What about you? So I uh, it, I was a Mets fan growing up. Sweet. To like, I kind of with religion. I stopped. Baseball strikes. Remember when baseball went Oh, started? yeah. 1994. Yeah, I stopped watching them. That's when I stopped. And then when I, the only reason I kind of got back into baseball is my wife's from fucking New Hampshire and a red, diehard Red Sox fan. Yeah, and they So all of a sudden, like, oh, wow. I, I was forced. Yeah. And all of a sudden, and I, they've been pretty so good. So I got lured I got back in with, like, Manny Ramirez and Roger Clemens and all this shit, like... Great. That's terror. why I like the Braves in the first place. They, yeah. they were on TBS and they, they, were, yeah. they were fucking good. Like, yeah. Well, you yeah. real well, about Maddox, why I liked them. Smoltz. Oh, yeah. dude, yeah. Yeah, but same kind of deal. You come into being a, a, a Sox fan when they're oh, awesome, right. and you you have a reason to be. Hey, my wife. Best steroid era Sox. hitter. Steroid era. Yeah. Bonds. Yeah. Got to be Bonds. Most because he's you arguably talk about, you the talk best about hitter. Offensive prowess. Yes. Yeah. yeah Bonds. Favorite hitter. Favorite he was the most, steroid like, hitter. Like Bonds, just like he just. It was crazy. That was crazy when Bonds Dude. was hitting him. Oh, yeah. He you know, got it was either hitting a home run or walking. So yeah. much. Home run or walking every fucking time. So much. His <laughs> bat was, His so, was fast. so big. <laughs> oh, huge. huge. He was wearing eight and three quarters. Mark Sam, McGuire, Sammy Sosa, Sosa, Sosa race yeah, was just an incredible brothers. season so of baseball. Uh, I got to be at a game. Fucking give him steroids. That's fun. Yeah. Dude, I, I got to be in the them. game. I, Sosa hit 58 I, and 59. You were there? We're, yeah. Oh, we're, already give, we're already giving in to uh, morphing with robots. We ought to just see. Let it eat. Yeah, let, <laughs> let it eat. Have a football. <laughs> where they're Have a football to too. The guys are running 60 miles an juice hour. Juice to the gills. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're exploding. Dude, well, and you couldn't you be getting there with CRISPR? <laughs> People creating super athletes and then also being able to use the best of... Wait, wait what? CRISPR? What are you talking yeah, about? the, uh, the, the you genetic talking? engineering uh, of 
people <laughs> in <Yeah>. basic. <laughs> you just basically. Like human farming? Yo, the yes, CRISPR is a technology they're attempting to develop. I, I believe they're are starting they to use I, it in people. Like... You could literally choose your height. Like choose height, choose eye it's, color. It's just not real, bro. Choose. Yeah, it's like <laughs> create a choose character. Choose proclivity toward uh, musicianship. What or do they say? Life. Like when I touch this table and feel that it's smooth, like the matter in it is just telling me. It's like the signals are just telling me it's smooth, and the eyes are telling me that I see it. Sensitivity, man. Right, like it's yeah. the bro. Sensitivity. We're in the holodeck. Man. Star Trek is the holodeck. And even though we know it's not real, sensitivity man's our best chance. Of developing any sense of reality, well, by by understanding 100%. what you see, what you hear, te- checking in, man. We are humans. Get to fucking. What's Dude, up? 100%. And then brain, heart, and gut. It's you like, develop these through interaction, through reflection, through. Gosh, man. Yes. Hundred percent. I. Uh, I love how it went right back from baseball. Yo, okay. Hmm, this is just how it goes. Favorite hitter ever, though. I mean, mm. so growing up, my favorite player was Daryl Strawberry. I fucking love the Mets. He's legit. I mean, dude, the, what is it, the 86 Mets? Yeah, Daryl yeah, yep. Strawberry. Yep. Dude, there's like stories. They were crazy. Oh, so yeah. Also, Keep here, here's as... a good one. Hopefully, you guys use this. So, a method I had when I first started, you know, being a man and doing man activities with girlfriends mm-hmm. to keep myself to be able to go would be reciting the 86 Mets starting field and I would just oh fuck that's yeah. amazing so let's test it go okay. for it I mean um, Gary, are you gonna, Gary are you Carter gonna... catcher catcher I'm gonna try to name him before I can suck you off <laughs> <laughs> um, we had Mookie Wilson in center field we had uh, Daryl Strawberry in right Howard Johnson was at th- Third base, we had uh, was it uh, uh the ah uh, the second baseman Dykstra? D- no, Dykstra. I think no. What well, what's Dykstra? I think he was he played left. He was left field. Yeah, he played left. Then there was uh, Keith Hernandez was first base. Keith yeah, Hernandez. Keith Hernandez. what a mustache! The best mustache. Great Seinfeld episode. Great we, had, Seinfeld. we have to have Dwight Gooden pitching. Yep. Who's second base? It, was, it, was, uh, it wasn't Robbie Elmar yet. What? And I don't have shortstop either. Those are the two I couldn't remember. I can't remember yeah, either. See, and I always wanted to believe in baseball. Those are the most, most players important to a team, but the A's defense were really good. Yeah. And, and well, they also like, middle swapped. Field, if we can't even I think they swapped oh, lives on airplanes, and they were on drugs. Oh and, my like, god! Like, did you ever watch? Did you watch the? It was the big, had a bit of wild. No, no, had a bit of wild. Doc the Ellis. The, no, the was it the Doc Gooden and the Daryl Strawberry? Like, uh, there's a twenty. There's oh, ESPN. Thirty for thirty. Thirty for thirty. There's a documentary called No No, about Doc Ellis. Oh, who, the pitcher who did LSD and pitched, dude. It's the guy is just nuts in general. It's worth a watch. I started to watch it. Yeah, it's it was cool. Weird at first, I felt like, and it is but, weird. I mean, God, just imagine that. Yeah, dude. But, like, All know, right, but he probably found a vibration. When right? was the first time you used yeah. that tactic, dude? I gotta fucking piss again. I've been murdering water since the sauna. <laughs> it's just spraying through. <laughs> When was the first time you used that tactic of uh, reciting, trying to recite those? Because at that point... Recite what? The Mets lineup. Oh, I was in high school, you know, like uh, a yeah. freshman. Trying to remember. 15 years old. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> my first, my first girlfriend was older, and I lied to her that I was, I was a virgin, but I didn't tell her. I told her I had sex. With oh her right, right. Because I was too scared. That happened. That but was it, me. It was too. like, so I got the girlfriend, and I like, I, I, I lied too. <laughs> oh yeah, I've done this before. I kind of was alright at it. I, I kind of practiced enough with a cushion. <laughs> right. <laughs> cushion. Did, did plenty of exploration, and honestly, man. That's Race is important. Then, yeah. oh my God, yeah, it's the most. You do it alone first, then you apply. <laughs> then, you, then you apply external 
uh, it puts. It's gonna get your wings. You develop those sensitivities. It's your own. And then you add other people. And the, the, the question is, like, you have to get out of comfort to, to kind of explore those insensitivities. To, to, like, to, you have to get into incomf- uncomfortable situations purposefully, whether it's socially. Like, sometimes I go to, like, things socially where I you know I'm going to hate it. Like, just to try to manage <laughs> myself. It's like training, right? Like, I'm it's going, a rep. You no, know, like, can... if I'm going to my parents' house, I'm like, can I go there and, like... They're the biggest challenge. Sometimes I leave and I'm just furious and they're furious and like, mm-hmm. can I just go there and be a positive person and kind of just go with the flow and not have to be Mr. Call out every fucking thing. You know, sometimes I win, but most of the time it is. <laughs> it's so bad. But uh, I want to be better at it because like they're getting older and I want to have good experiences with them. Yeah. You know, I think sometimes we forget just how the power of like people that love us just calling them and saying I love you. You know, these, oh yeah, these, these things like yeah, or it's any, important yeah. to do. I mean, any kind of reach out. We have we have so many opportunities to connect, and I just imagine people very disconnected because it's odd to sit in front of somebody and meditate with them. Yeah, hmm. Where I'm we're just we're just we're showing up, and people have people are just. Wherever they're at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, you're right. Every situation can be a rep, a training rep. It's interesting because... Well, I, they kind of always are, right? Yeah. Even this, this moment right now, we're training. Everything. We're, we're, so this, opportunity. This, is, this is some kind of like laying down of something. Yep. Part of the threat, yeah. no doubt. It's all opportunity. How you doing on time, brother? Yeah, we... Uh, should we call it? I gotta leave. So we got like 10 minutes? 10 minutes? Two like the last 10 minutes work yeah like I, I could tell you this like and this would be a good thing to finish it with like so in my life I went and like when my wife kind of left me and I had a bunch of tragic things happen in my life and it was the lowest I'd ever been and before that happened like maybe months before you asked me like Robbie how are you it would be similar to this Right, just like living it, right? Just yeah, living doing it. well, and, it, and really, it was one of those moments where, like, you kind of go to bed one day, life is, and you wake up and it's completely different. And it's then you get that space there, and all this stuff happens, you know. And, that, and and through that process, like, I remember always wishing, like, thinking about, like, you know, when I was with my ex-wife, like, I'd be by myself, and, and she'd be sleeping or something, and I would kind of imagine what. A, fantastic relationship would be and how that would be and like we all get old we all get wrinkly Mm -hmm. and we gotta really like each other and I would think about these things and then four months after this all this chaos happens like you know I have law like court shit going on and I have this yoga festival booked from way before and I just went I said, fuck it, I'm going to this yoga festival and I'm gonna figure shit out afterwards. And it was in Vermont, beautiful mountains. Mm-hmm. And that's where I met my lady at Society for the first time. And it was like, we went to this, there was a yoga teacher that really resonated with me. He was more a traditional yoga teacher. He did bhakti yoga. And within that, there's like kuntan chanting and they have like a harmonium. And it's super vulnerable, right? Like you're chanting yeah. in a group. Mm. And I was like, you want to go with me? And so we go. And the guy tells the story about Sita and Ram. And Sita, Sita was a, a princess that her, her dad was like, the only one that can marry my daughter is the one that can string this bow, right? So all these people tried to string it, no one could, and then Ram comes and he not only strings the bow, he breaks it. And then you're saying, Sita Ram, Sita Ram, and like as the story goes, I'm telling him, I'm like staring in this girl's eyes, and I'm crying, she's crying, and I recognize in that moment the universe just gave me everything I asked for. Dope. And you know, there was a moment 
you know, afterwards when we got back, we were like, we're in fucking love on a mountain, right? This is a love mm. festival, you know, yeah. like, we're going to have to land. Yep. Yeah. You know, I, the previous to going here, I had a girl I was trying to get that I sent roses to. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yeah. Like, trying to catch this girl. and But then I met Sidey, and my biggest lesson with meeting her was... It was so close after getting split up that I was like, it's way too close. I've been married for 16 years and I shouldn't get with this person just because I need to live. I need to be, a, you know, I need to be single. Yeah. I need to do these things. And I'm like, wait, the fucking universe is giving me, Rodney, everything you're asking for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're, you're worried, you're fear, you're in fear about what could happen. Hmm. Or what other people might think of this, or what if yeah. the expectation is, oh, I'm supposed to wait a certain amount of time after it, I get divorced. Yeah. And it was like, once I made that choice, every other area of my life started to smooth out. And it's not because Sidey kind of like all of a sudden I'm in a relationship to fix it, but it was like all of a sudden everything kind of started to work in synergy again. Yeah. You know, and... I think some people sometimes think they're stuck where they're at and they're like this is how it's going to be forever and I think it's really important to know it's fucking not going to be and yeah, you do sure. have some kind of control of what that can be no doubt and you have all the control and all the At power this moment you have choice and where I there's think, awareness there's choice I would just recommend anybody and everybody just to like Go forth. You had to be wis- willing to listen to the universe, though. You said it was a vulnerable fucking thing. You look in the society's eyes when you're chanting. Yeah, it's like it's like you know child's pose in yoga, right? It's the ultimate surrender. It's like go forth with surrender. Go forth where like. I'm not. It's all wor- good if this I'm not worried poorly. about what situation is going to happen because I don't. I know this stuff is not finite. Yeah. It's not linear. It's cyclical. It's all good if it goes poorly. I get an opportunity yeah. to adjust. Yeah. Jocko speech. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> good. I totally lost myself in that one. God damn yeah. it. Good. I was trying to. I was good. trying to wrap it up to something good, but like. Good. I really do believe, like, if people, like, just, if if you're, if everything's authentic and you're just constantly making sure those things are authentic in your life, like, when you know you should, like, move on. And don't be mad that you moved on. Like, I understand that, like, just because a relationship or a thing ends doesn't mean it wasn't magical and it wasn't great and you didn't have good times and memories. Like, Mm. like, things don't dictate just because if something ends shitty doesn't mean the whole thing was shitty. Right. Take what was. Yeah. For both the dark and the light. I dig it, dude. Yeah, I'm grateful for you guys. Grateful so for you too, like, man. What are some like kind of things you guys are like focused on for like you know going into the new year and just right now in general in your lives, just going forward together and yeah, individually. yeah, man. Uh, recognizing patterns over the last year or so in that there's a lot of people who talk about wanting to be better and an obvious disparity between talking and talking about and being about those things and recognizing that where everybody is at there's still fear in that so for me a a bit of vulnerability here really looking into uh, sourcing my food and the services that I am procuring from more of a local standpoint and recognizing that the difficulty that I have in that is this it's the same difficulty a lot of people are are up against with regard to creating movement in their life where I, where I've excelled in this thing that most people think they need as healthy and I you know for years being like why don't you just fucking get your shit together because that's what you need to do, but just trying to develop a, a better place of understanding through challenging myself in a similarly scary way. It's harder, 
to eat sure. more local. It's harder to live more local. That's why, that's why people don't do movement stuff. It's harder to create that stuff in your life. So, we're, I guess we have taking my we, own. We, we kind of create that the notion of it's harder, and then maybe it's harder to figure it out. But, but, you know, maybe once you get a routine in your life of doing what it like, exactly. you know, there's so many methods and ways. To maybe a great return on investment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. That's where I'm at. That's awesome. What about you? Yeah. What's what's your what's your what's your next six months? Where are you going? I'm gonna continue to be about it, quote unquote. <laughs> And for that, it just means to pay attention and be sensitive, as Kurt and I have defined it. Tap into what's around me, create an accurate perception of reality, and try to maintain choice as much as I can in order to respond and then extend about it to my team, my family, my fiance, everybody that I get to come in contact to all the way down to the random interaction at whatever place, hopefully. That's my six months and understanding that I will fail and I will celebrate that too because that's an opportunity to succeed the next time. I love that. It's all training. Yeah, I love that. So act, reflect, yeah. adjust. Fuck yeah man. Fuck what we're doing, man. Fail forward. Fuck yeah. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate you. Appreciate you too. Yeah. And the perfect time. 